Hello, my name is Olivia Hart and I'm a senior researcher for the Global Green Guide at The Legal 500. So welcome to a new episode of Sustainable Conversations. Uh, I'm joined here today by Thomas Jelly, uh, founder of ESG consultancy Bright Blue Dot. Uh, he's kindly agreed to, to share his thoughts and views on all things sustainability and ESG for, from a con consultancy perspective. Thomas's professional background is in city law and corporate sustainability in a multinational context. So Thomas, thank you so much for joining us today. Let's dive straight in. Um, what have you been seeing in corporate sustainability recently? Olivia, thank you very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be with you today. When I look broadly at the ESG sustainability landscape, what I see is a, a landscape that is fast evolving. It continues to move very quickly. And I think I'd characterize that evolution in particular from voluntary soft initiatives and guidelines towards hard regulation. And with that evolution, what we're seeing is a growing regulatory intolerance of greenwashing. And I guess that's only right. So all in all, I think we're seeing new demands for lawyers in private practice and in-house counsel. To take some examples, if you cast your mind back to 2015 in the UK context, that was the year of the UK Modern Slavery Act. And things have moved on a pace since then at the European level in particular, with the EU taxonomy regulation, the EU Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive, a sustainability finance disclosures uh, regulation as well, Corporate Sustainability Due Diligence Directive, a draft was adopted earlier this year. And across the pond in the US, we are seeing things moving apace at the SEC with proposed rules to standardize climate risk disclosure in the US. So things are moving, they're bubbling. And as a result, law firms and in-house counsel are advising, managing risk, engaging with governance in areas that are relatively new to many. I think we're going to see continuing evolution and development of ESG regulation, and that will have really far reaching consequences for so many organizations. So it's, it's key to understand the ESG context fully, whatever capacity we're working in, um, but including as lawyers. And a little earlier, we, we had a chat about uh, a table that I've, I've put together. I wonder whether we might be able to share that at this point. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So my, my purpose with this little table is to show from an in-house perspective, it, it can be really challenging to know where to go for support across the whole of the, the table. Um, you know, law firms are getting used to advising on the regulation part, on the legal part in particular, and that's increasingly important. But lawyers within practice or as in-house counsel really need to have some grasp of the whole. And what I've tried to do in this table is show an idea of the ESG context in an organization. The ESG context involves getting to grips with materiality, and that's what are the sustainability or ESG issues that are material to the organization? What are the regulations that apply? How does all this impact the organization's strategy, its reporting, benchmarking, the metrics, the measurement it uses, but also its uh, verification, its assurance, marketing, sales, comms, people, and culture aspects of the organization. There are touch points with ESG in all of them. Lawyers in private practice and in-house counsel are naturally used to focusing on regulation and law. But I think it's a really good idea to have an overview of the whole breadth of ESG in the organization and understand how the different elements connect and their impacts across functions. It's also a good idea to understand ESG aspects um, upstream, downstream with key clients and suppliers. And I think increasingly lawyers, especially in-house, will need to appeal to their, their leadership colleagues or board through the language of strategy and other core functions just as much as through the language of law and regulation. What type of ESG work are you seeing in the legal sector as of late? And, and what are some of the most prevalent ESG concerns that you're seeing? I think perhaps one way of, uh, of addressing that is to think of some of the client briefs that we've received in the last uh, six months or so. Um, I can think of four in particular. 
different sorts of organizations to involve uh, large multinational organizations, very well established, very mature when it comes to ESG and sustainability. And two other briefs come from international scale-ups, one a fintech and the other one in the field of medtech. Um, so in the first example, we had a highly, highly experienced GC and company secretary who'd been in her organization for many years. And this GC, as an increasing number, had executive sponsorship responsibility for sustainability. She'd had that role for four years and was in a post-business unit merger during the pandemic. And this client came to us looking for some support around ESG to help her really take stock of her organization's progress and sustainability so far, to think about a roadmap to 2030 and how the foundations for that roadmap could be relayed and bolstered post-business unit merger in the next six to 18 months. That's a really good engagement. And what we did is we started off by putting the ESG stuff to one side, actually. And we really tried to get under the skin of the organization to understand its business strategy, its people culture, the sorts of things that were coming out of employee engagement surveys. And then we went back to the strategy roadmap, tried to make sense of what had happened so far. And we helped our clients to understand how that could be built on for the next phase. But as we often see with clients and prospective clients, the, the thing that we really value first is getting to grips with the organization as a whole and then understanding how ESG flows through its strategy, its structure, the strong signals coming out of leadership and the sometimes weaker signals that come through things like employee engagement. The second example I'd like to tell you about is a, another large international organization, very mature actually when it comes to sustainability and ESG, great on reporting and stakeholder engagement. And there we were contacted by the global legal team of one of the business units. 30 to 40 lawyers based in the UK, Western Europe, in North America, and in China. And this team of lawyers really wanted to understand how they could support the business better as lawyers. And they've been talking to some of their in-house sustainability specialists, but what they were really looking for to start off with was a much better understanding of the origins of ESG, where it's coming from, why it's coalescing now and in this particular way, and some idea of the future direction. So we did that. We let them know the lay of the land. In fact, we went all the way back uh, 200 years to understand where this is coming from and why it's coming together now. And then we came up with a number of different proposals to help this team get to grips with the many different contributions they could make to ESG in a mature organization as in-house counsel. Uh, the second two examples, uh, one of FinTech I mentioned a little while ago, it started getting to grips with DI, with local community engagements, also with environmental initiatives, in particular around GHG. And the ask there was, was quite simply this, you know, they had lots of plans, initiative projects going on, you know, spilling out in all sorts of directions, which on one level is great, uh, but our prospective clients there, the, the GC, really wanted to understand how these different initiatives could be brought together, how a filter could be applied to make sure that the right focus areas were under the microscope, resources were being pushed out in the right areas. And the GC really wanted to understand how these initiatives could be brought together in a strategic way that really adds value with focus to the organization. Um, my last example, again, is a GC who came with an HR colleague. Um, in this case, we didn't get a mandate. And the scenario was, was quite different. It's a scale up international in med tech, GC and the HR lead were really keen to start exploring the DNI landscape. They, they felt there was a need that the time was right. Um, they had started exploring some of the online platforms that exist in this field. And their particular concern was that in their organization, bandwidth is, is quite limited. Um, we tend to prefer to go slowly at first, to engage, deliberate, then decide and execute. Uh, but in this case, there was a bit of a mismatch because the organization wanted to go fast and bandwidth was really quite limited. So we weren't able to take that one on, but it's very interesting 
for us to hear of the different ways different organizations and their GCs see that they need to bring ESG, DI into the organization. So what do you anticipate next, Thomas? Well, the regulatory framework for ESG sustainability, I think really will continue to evolve. With that, organizations' demands of their in-house legal teams and outside counsel will continue to develop. To help their clients navigate with agility, my sense is that lawyers will need to understand the origins, the status quo, evolution, and the breadth and depth of ESG in the context of their clients' organizations, its strategic imperatives, and the roles that they can play to support. In some instances, of course, it will be a matter of black letter law advice. In others, it may be in relation to governance. But whatever the context, I really feel that lawyers will fare best if they've come to grips with a full understanding of the organization's ESG context. And at Bright Blue Dots, as former lawyers, we've been happy helping our legal clients do just that. Well, thank you so much, Thomas, for all your insights in this area. It's been really fascinating to learn about um, everything uh, from an ESG perspective and consultancy perspective here. Um, so thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you, Olivia. It's been great to be with you.